Hi everyone, today I will be looking at the new Star Wars Black series, Din Djarin, The Mandalorian and The Child. My local specialty collector store Robo Robo in Singapore managed to get this in real early, so props to them. Also a shout out to my friend Terry who ran down to the store and hooked me up with this. A quick look at the box. It comes in a new Star Wars Black series packaging, this time in deluxe size. On the top there's a window, and on the bottom there are some product information. Moving to the side. This new artwork of the Mandalorian holding the child. Moving to the back, the same artwork as well as the description of the Mandalorian. So let's go ahead and get him open. And now the packaging, you see the action figure packed in with a rifle, a blaster, his jetpack, the child, the hovering pram and a stand, some Beskar plates, as well as a fob tracker. Taking a closer look at his accessories, he comes with a blaster that's painted in silver on the barrel and the trigger area, as well as some brown paint on the grip. And the blaster has exactly the same mold and paint as the one from the full Beskar single pack Mandalorian. And likewise, he holds his blaster just fine in his right hand, as well as store it in his holster on his right thigh just fine, like so. He comes with a rifle that's casted in a dark gunmetal looking plastic with brown paint on the butt, silver on the trigger area, as well as the tip of the barrel. He's got a scope attachment detail on the top and moving it to the other side. More interesting detail over here in the trigger area. And no surprises here, this new rifle is exactly the same mold and paint as the rifle from the single pack full Basker Mandalorian. And of course Mando can hold his rifle really nicely. And you can also peg in his rifle on the top left hole on his back. So it looks really neat when slung on his back. He also comes with a jetpack, casted entirely in this metallic plastic with no paint applications. Jetpack design detail on the back, thrusters on the bottom, and pegs on the inside. So yes, the new jetpack has exactly the same sculpt and no paint as the jetpack from the single release Full Basker Mandalorian. Moving his cape aside, Mandal wears his jetpack just fine with the three packs going onto the three holes on his back. And of course he looks rather awkward with his hard plastic cape slung to one side as he wears his jetpack. Taking a look at the 5 slabs of Basker steel, these are new accessories with this release. They're all casted in a metallic looking plastic with no paint. Each slab of Basker has wavy patterns on them, and that's an interesting detail to add to a plain slab of metal. It's got a really tiny Empire logo on it as well. Moving to the back side of the slab, the same wavy metallic pattern on the other side as well. We also have the tracking fob, and this is a brilliant accessory. It's casted in a metallic plastic, with black paint on the main body, and red paint for the light indicator. On the other side, more sculpted detail but no paint. And of course Mando holds the slabs of Beskar steel and the tracking fob just fine as well. But I do wish he came with a Camtono to hold the other four slabs of Beskar steel, which otherwise have nowhere for storage. And here we have the Charles hovering pram. The flight stand is the clear transparent plastic and that plugs into the hole in the bottom of the pram. The pram itself is oval shaped, casted in a grey plastic with gold paint accents on the top as well as the back. A rather simple sculpt, all round with smooth surfaces. And you can open the pram by just removing the top cover. On the inside there's black paint for the cushion area, as well as some copper paint for the inside details on the back. And the new release of Grogu fits in just fine, putting the cover on. The awesome thing is that the single release of the child also fits in just fine. Placing the cover on, and there's always the option of placing the child standing up inside the pram. This is the new version of him. And this is what he looks like with the old version of the child as well. Looks really cool just like in the Disney series. And last but not the least among the accessories, we take a look at the child himself. The head and hands are casted in a green plastic with paint detail for the face, as well as the hairs on his head. Paint detailing for the eyes is very sharp. There's white for the whites of his eyes. A little bit of bleeding over here on the left side of his eye. Some pink paint also to fill in his ears. There's also some very subtle pink blush on his cheeks. His coat is an entire piece of beige plastic with sculpted detail to show the folds in the fabric. His paint applications on the edge of his sleeves as well as around his collar. Moving around to the back, more detail for folds in the fabric as well as paint on his collar. On the bottom, He's got feet sculpted and painted in green. So overall he's a cute little figure. However his left arm is permanently sculpted reaching out or using the force. His head is on a ball joint so it can go 360. 
a little wiggle room upwards and very very slight downwards. The wrists are also ball jointed so he goes 360 as well as some wiggle in all directions. Right wrist also has the same articulation. And that's it for articulation, he only has 3 points of articulation with none in the feet. So comparing the new child versus the single pack release child, I'm a little disappointed that the head sculpt, even though it's a brand new sculpt, the details are actually softer when you compare it to the old one. The paint for the hairs on the top of his head is also coarser, and I actually much prefer the finer and more subtle paint on the old one. The paint applications for the whites of his eyes are welcome, but I'm not sure it really adds much to the new figure compared to the old one. The new one also doesn't seem to have a black wash on his coat. While the old one does have a black wash, and that to me is more visually appealing, the new one also only has 3 points of articulation compared to the old one, which has articulation in his arms as well as his feet. While the articulation in his feet doesn't really affect much on the stability of the figure, I definitely appreciate the articulation in his hands to get him into a couple of different poses. So it's a bummer that the new one doesn't have that much articulation. And overall, I'll say the old single release version is superior to the new one. Okay, now onto the sculpt of the figure itself. The sculpt and paint of the body is exactly the same as the single release Mandalorian Basker armor version. The only difference on this new Mandalorian is in the head sculpt. The sculpt of his helmet looks decent at first, but with a closer look, there are some defects that I must point out. First of all, in comparison, I think the helmet sculpt is softer compared to the previous version. And there's also some warping going on on the left side of his helmet. And going round down the sides, his helmet looks almost pinched front and back. And continuing down the back of the figure, you can see where the helmet is kind of deformed on the left side. And coming round back to the front, and looking at the action figure from a lower angle, you can see his chin peeking out from below. The previous version did have a sort of face sculpted underneath the helmet, but that chin is hidden away. So from even a low angle, the helmet serves its purpose and hides his human head away. And popping up his helmet, tipping his helmet upwards, you can see how deformed it is from the box. I'm gonna try to fix this with some heat. As for Din Djarin's unhelmeted head, the sculpting of his messy hair is pretty good, capturing the essence of someone who's been in a helmet for a long time. His face paint is also sharp, with very accurately applied paint for the eyes, his facial hair and his lips. But the main issue with this face sculpt is that it doesn't really look like Pedro Pascal. Perhaps he looks okay from his nose up, but Hasbro has really screwed up the sculpt along his jawline, so he looks like he's added on some weight. So the face sculpt itself isn't bad, it's just that the resemblance to the actor is quite disappointing. So moving on to a side profile as well, from the side he really doesn't look too bad. On the back, more details to show the texturing in his messy hair. So yeah, this face sculpt is a bit of a letdown. So I heated up the helmet and I managed to get it back in shape, putting the helmet on and cramming his head as far in as I could. I can still see his chin peeking out from beneath the helmet from a low angle, and that really bugs me. And moving on to the back, you can also still see his hair peeking out from beneath the helmet. Not so much of a big deal from the back, since he's the same scalp as the previous release, I'll just quickly go through the details on the body. He's got armor pieces painted in silver on his torso and his shoulders. A soft plastic strap down his torso that connects to his belt. More painted details for buckles. Silver gauntlets on his lower arms. The base of the figure is a dark brown plastic. Also more detail for the panels painted in grey down the front of his lower torso and the sides of his belt. Nice sculpt and paint on his hands. Moving down to the back, again more detail on the sides of his belt. More armor pieces beneath his cape. His cape is a dark grey plastic that's soft enough to be moved around, but still rigid enough to be awkward when you hang it off his shoulder. Back to the front of the figure, painted armor panels on his thighs. Very interesting asymmetric kneecaps. More asymmetric detail on his lower legs, just to show off the mismatched armor pieces. And when you look at his feet, they're back to having the same mirrored sculpt. For articulation, on his neck he's got two ball joints, one at the top and one at the bottom that connects to the torso, so his head goes 360. He can tilt up as well as tilt down, and then some sideways tilt right as well as left. Pretty happy with this articulation for his neck. Swivel hinge at the shoulder so he goes 360 over here, as well as out that much. Nice design for the shoulder armor for it to overlap and still get his arm out almost 90 degrees. Swivel at the upper part of the elbow so he goes 360. Single hinge elbow bend for about 90 degrees. Swivel at the wrist as well for 360. And his wrist can bend in as well as out. Articulation on his right wrist actually bends down as well as up. And this is very useful for a blaster holding hand. Ball jointed at the mid torso. He swivels right as well as left but he can't go all the way 360 because of this plastic strap over here. Pretty decent forward bend as well as backward bend. 
and also some side to side on the right as well as left. Ball jointed hips that go outwards a fair bit as well as forward and backward that much. 360 thigh swivel. Double jointed knees for a pretty decent range. No calf swivel and very tight ankle tilt downwards as well as upwards and very functional ankle pivot outwards as well as inwards. Size wise, the pram floats at about 3 and 5 eighths of an inch, just over 9 centimeters, while the child stands at 1 and 1 eighth of an inch, or just under 3 centimeters, and Mando stands at about 6 inches, or just over 15 centimeters. For size comparisons, here they are with a Stormtrooper and a Death Trooper, with the Mandalorian Loyalist, the Armorer, as well as the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian. The pram certainly looks like it's floating at the right height, with a couple of Marvel Legends and some G.I. Joe classified series. Many collectors would think that this is the ultimate box set because it provides the two main characters from the Mandalorian TV series plus a few key accessories. But I can only agree to a certain extent. The hovering pram is for me the highlight. I can finally put the child into his main ride for Season 1 and the beginning of Season 2. I also like the tracking fob and that's certainly a detail that can be used with other bounty hunters. The Beskar slabs are a nice touch but they are lacking a Camtono to store them properly. However, the Baby Yoda figure is a letdown because it's basically a statue with a poorer sculpt when compared to the single pack release. Mando's helmet is warped out of the box, and even though it can be fixed, his chin still peeks out from underneath. The unhelmeted head sculpt bears quite a poor resemblance to Pedro Pascal and this has to be the most disappointing part of this set. Hasbro has really dropped the ball over here in the execution of the face sculpt and helmet gimmick. In conclusion, I can only recommend this if you do not own the single packed full Basker Mando, or if you really must get your hands on the Prem, Basker Slaps and Tracking Fob, all of which I think might be re-released in future. If you already have the single packs of the full Basker Mando and the Child, you really might not need this new box set, since Mando stays helmeted almost all the time and the Prime gets destroyed anyway. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.